All right, we are blazing through doodling with purpose because we are now up to the trilateral sounds this week. We finished the monosyllable sounds, the bilateral sounds, and well, by trilateral, it means three sound glyphs. But before that, let's jump into last week's homework. And as always, the first thing to do is to glyph it yourself. That's the best way to keep doodling and learning these glyphs is to, you know, repetition and actually draw them out. And once we've drawn them out, as always, we're going to transliterate them, meaning writing all of the sounds before we try to turn them into actual words and noting to be careful to make all of the appropriate sound complements. All right, so first off, we have the R open mouth, which you recall is towards. And what are we heading towards? We're heading towards the first of the month. Yes, you can head towards a date. Hey, why not? Everyone looks forward to Valentine's Day or St. Patrick's Day or Arbor Day. And what happens on the first of the month? Well, we have the word whoopity, messenger. I know it sounds like whoopee, right? And whose messenger is it? Well, it's the king's messenger, Nuswit, recalling that the N is pronounced first in king. Now, when you have this, you can indicate a plural. So when you have a person, the king, a noun, before another noun, messenger, it becomes plural. So the king's messenger could be interpreted from this. And what's the king's messenger doing? Well, we have a verb in the present tense. He was bringing, because we have the, uh, the her with the, with the stroke line followed by the verb. Then what is he bringing? Well, quite a few things. First, he's bringing flowers, and that's plural because we have three strokes there indicating multiple flowers. He's also bringing incense. Actually, it could be her, but messengers were more likely men. And uh, then we have ha, which by itself means 1,000. So he's also bringing 1,000 goats with him. Drunu, goats. And where is he bringing all of this stuff? Well, he's also heading towards something, a repetition of the mouth R glyph, the first one in this sentence, and followed that by per, house, with the stroke line under it, indicating that the glyph indicates what it actually is. And what type of house? It's a were, a great house, a were, per, or per, were. So the whole sentence would be, towards the first of the month, the king's messenger was bringing flowers, incense, 1,000 goats towards the great house. All right, ready to jump into sounds that are three different sounds? Yep, they're actually some of the funnest glyphs. So the first one here is this, and it's another one of those objects, actually many, that you sort of have to immerse yourself into ancient Egyptian culture. What you're looking at is a mast with a sail. Just like this. See how much Egyptian sails were just like the HMS Victory there? Crazy. Technology doesn't change that much. All right, so this is pronounced achia, achia, knowing that the H with the dot is a hiss sound. So here we have achia with a repetition of an ah followed by a determinative, the sun disk, which at the end of a word is almost always a determinative. And of course, with the repetition of a single sound following a bilateral, or in this case, trilateral sound, we can ignore that. It's a rep it's a echo sound, and this is the word lifetime. You know, like the channel or you know the span of your life. All right, another one where we have aha followed by another ah, followed by the movement determinative. We've seen that in lots of different verbs indicating movement. And again, we're going to cancel out that second ah sound because it's a, a reminder. And this is the word to stand, meaning not to move. So yes, the movement glyph can also mean not moving. It's kind of like French. All right, now a famous glyph, you've probably seen this on lots of rock and roll posters and in Hot Topic. It is ach, which you recall the H with the little happy face under it is like ach in Bach. And now what you're drawing is actually a sandal tie, like what holds a sandal to your foot. And so ach, very famous, it's drawn first as a little horseshoe, and then we draw each triangle on the side. Then we're gonna complement those triangles with sort of the stalk of the ankh, and recall that the bottom should be a little bit wider than the top. I probably should have driven, drawn that even wider. All right, so ankh, and then you can draw a little circle there for the 3D effect. So this is actually the word ankh, and you'll notice that the N and the H sound are repeated, much like with a bilateral glyph. If you have single sounds following a trilateral that, are, that echo the sounds in the trilateral, you don't need to say them, you just write them, and it means the word life in order to, you know, expand the word if you have space. Another word with the unk in front of it. And if you don't recognize what that determinative is, that's okay. But the point is you recognize that it is a determinative. That's the key because it's a glyph you haven't seen before. 
And what you're drawing here is an ancient Egyptian mirror. Most ancient Egyptian mirrors looked like this, especially the ones we stole from King Tut's tomb. All right, so this word, an, is mirror. Here we have an with the W, chick, and three strokes. If you recall, three strokes means you are pluralizing this word. So we would pronounce an, and this is the word for the living. So how the word life turns into the living when you have plural. All right, here's another fun one, and you probably can tell what this is. You're drawing a giraffe. No, just kidding. It's a lizard. And this is pronounced ashia, knowing that the S with the little uh, V over it is sh, like a librarian would say. So asha, we start drawing the uh, lizard with the tip of the note, followed by the face with two half circles, and then the body with two half circles. Once you've done that, it's pretty easy to add the tail, the arms, and the two eyes. All right, so the lizard and the vulture. Asha. Well, obviously the second a ah is an echo effect, but we also have a determinative of plural strokes after it, so we know that we're dealing with something in multiples. And in fact, this is the word for multiples, many or numerous. So if you have, you know, don't want to count an exact number of goats, you can use that. All right, here we have asha with just a stroke line. And as you recall from per, from our homework, a stroke line under a glyph says it is what it is. So that's the word lizard. All right, now a lizard with the open mouth R, stroke line, and man pointing to his face. So it's a occupation or a uh, state of being. So we have ashar, and this is to be talkative, the state of being of being talkative. Awesome. All right, so here's your homework for next week, incorporating some of the glyphs that we did this week and the vocabulary. Take a look at it, glyph it yourself, transliterate it, and translate it. And then next week, we'll go over it, as we always do. Thanks, as always, for joining. It's a pleasure to have you in class. If you like this, please share it with friends. It's free. It's fun. It's doodling with purpose, the Internet's only class on learning hieroglyphics week by week. Thanks again for being part of the class, and I'll see you guys next time.